I have to admit that I have become a little bit addicted to stenciling just recently and I've started to accumulate rather a lot of them. On this piece you can see I've got some raised stencil work here and then I've got a different use of stenciling over here and I just love the effect it gives. In this piece I've used stenciling to give this linear work and I think it's really intriguing and just and makes a lovely contrast with other more sort of flowing areas. So in this film I want to show how we can get all sorts of different effects using stencils to add, well, add a different dimension to our mixed media work. So there are millions of stencils you can get online, look on Amazon, look on specialist craft shops, look at Timu, any any online place will no doubt sell stencils and you can get them in every design you could possibly think of. So when you get one it is worth checking it because some stencils definitely have a right and a wrong side. If I draw a little picture you'll see what I mean. So some stencils if you were looking at the the cross section they're cut like this and the cut is sort of straight up and down so that doesn't have a right or a wrong side. But other stencils, and I am really exaggerating, are cut on a bit of a slant. They have a bevel. So if that's your paper here that you're about to stencil on, you definitely want it placed with this slightly larger edge in contact with your paper. Because if you put it upside down, Again, that's your paper, that's your stencil, you will find that the paint will slightly seep under the edges. So do just check. To say many will just be cut straight up and down. Some will have that slight rounding or beveling and you want that facing upwards. So it can be quite hard to see that. And if you can't see it, don't worry about it. But, you know, have a little look. Now a lot of people using stencils will use acrylic which are naturally a bit more thick than watercolour. A lot of what I say will apply to them too but we've got an extra challenge with our watercolours. The traditional way of doing stenciling is to use a brush, make sure your watercolour isn't too runny, maybe take off any excess and then doing a stippling, an up and down motion. Don't use a nice watercolour brush, use an old one where the point has already been damaged and you'll be fine. You hold your stencil in place to make sure it doesn't slip. You can get special spray on stencil adhesive. I honestly don't think you need that for the sort of stenciling you might be doing. So I've done my stippling and then I just carefully lift it off and I've got my, my perfect stencil. Clean off your stencils between uses so that you don't spread the colour around or nothing seeps underneath. If you don't want to use a brush at all, something that's good to use is a bit of a kitchen sponge. You can cut it to size. It's probably a bit big, so just cut it to size. And then you've got a little stamper. Put your, your um, sponge into the paint and then, oh, that might be too runny. And then again, dab up and down, holding your stencil in place. We did that all in the one colour. Of course, we could change colours. Again, I think I've done that too runny. Yeah, that's what happens. You see just here that it's gone under the stencil because I had too much paint on there. So do go careful. I'll pretend I did that on purpose to show you what, what not to do. But you just have to be really careful that it doesn't go under. But now we can get a multicoloured stencil by changing the colour of our, our paint halfway through. But if you've got a more open stencil, say like this one, you could texture through the stencil. So rather than using an artificial sponge like that, we could use something with a bit more texture. This is a natural sponge. 
So I've softened it in water and then really dried it out because again, we don't want that water just going under the stencil. Dip the sponge into your, your paint and then holding that stencil in place, you can simply dab up and down and get more of a texture. You could let that dry and then do a different colour on top if you like. When you're happy with the result, peel it off and you have a really interesting, more textured approach. So another approach quite similar would be to splatter. And I'm just going to protect what we've already done. Because this is going to be messy. Load our brush up. and do little splatters to go through the stencil. When you're happy with the effect you've got, again, you just need to peel off your stencil very carefully. I think these sorts of more textured stenciling works better with quite an open stencil like, like the one I showed you there. The next possibility is to use a stencil to actually lift out a shape. So if you've already painted in watercolour, make sure it's dry and then place your stencil where you want it to be. You could use a bit of this which is Magic Eraser. That's a melamine sponge that you will find in art shops or indeed in the cleaning aisle of, of your local supermarket. Or you can just use a little short flat brush that you would use for for corrections and lifting out anyway. Your melamine sponge needs to be wet in clean water and then really well squeezed out. Even squeeze it out into um, a dry cloth or something to get that moisture out. Holding your pencil in, not pencil, stencil in place. Gently wipe over. If possible, wipe away from the edges of the stencil, depends how big the holes are, to make sure that you're not pushing the paint under the edge. You've got that short flat brush again, just make sure it's clean, wet it in clean water, but take off any excess. And then again, try to come away from the edges and loosen pigment so that that doesn't go under the edge of your stencil. Whether you find it easy to lift the pigment or not will depend on what colour you've used. All colours should lift to a certain extent but certain colours are very staining and harder to lift. When you've lifted as much as you want just remove your stencil and you get this beautiful sort of shadow effect and I personally like it when all the, the colour hasn't gone because I think it, it gives almost like a photographic effect to it. Another way of using stencil to apply something like this, which is a mica powder, if you wanted to add some shine, or we could even add some gold leaf. You could use a glue stick, hold your stencil in place, and then from the edge, just go over the shape you take it off and of course washing that stencil afterwards get a nice soft brush sprinkle that powder on and then i'm gonna tap off the excess so it doesn't get wasted add a bit more in the areas i've missed and i end up with the impression of that stencil. It's not perfect as you can see, but that can add a really interesting effect. If, if you're doing layers of mixed media work, that could be a really interesting way. Once it's, it's dry, you could just brush away some of that excess as well. If you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I love gold leaf and using that with my ink and my watercolors. So this is an experiment. I don't know whether it'll work. I have got in this pot a little leftover metal leaf size which is what you use to stick gold leaf onto to any surface so i am wondering if i stencil this through 
let it dry and then apply gold leaf, how that will work. So using a brush, I am going to gently stipple it on. Again, just holding that stencil in place. I happen to have coloured this gold size because I wanted it to give a warm glow in case any of the gold broke up over the surface when I was doing the other project. And that's going to be quite good for us here because we'll be able to see what, what's happened. It takes about 15 minutes to dry gold size and it will dry to be about as sticky as a post-it note. So you've done that again, just lift it off nice and carefully. Come back when that's dry and that gives me a moment to go and find some gold leaf. So the gold size has dried to be about as sticky as a post-it note. It never fully dries. And I did a couple of extra ones because frankly, I was really disappointed with this mica one. I thought this would be a lot better than it is, but I wondered if the gold size would be any better. Okay, that has worked better. A lot better than that, hasn't it? I think if I ever need to have that sort of shimmer, I'm not going to use a glue stick. I've got some little sheets of imitation gold leaf here. Very shiny, it's nasty quality, but again, it's I'm just experimenting. So I'm going to lay that sheet over the gold size that we stenciled. Move it in a second. So let's do the same with this one. Real gold leaf is beautiful and you want to handle a lot more carefully than this. I'm just removing the excess with a brush and you can see that the gold leaf has stuck to the gold size and we get that lovely outline of our leaf, so, uh, cheese plant leaf done in gold leaf. There, isn't that shiny? And we could use all sorts of stencils to get amazing gold patterns in our work, should we wish to. One of my favourite ways of using stencils is with modelling paste. And here's a few samples I've done before just to test out what they look like. The effect, I think, is gorgeous. It gives such a feeling of texture, even though it's less than a millimetre thick. It's really straightforward, so let me show you how to do it. If you're a watercolourist, perhaps you haven't come across modelling paste before. If you use acrylics, you probably have. It's a thick paste that is usually used by acrylic painters to add impasto effects to their work and it adds real structure. You can see how thick it is. There are different sorts of modeling pastes available and they do vary in how absorbent they are or how white they are. So you might have to do a bit of experimenting to find the right one for you. To use it with a stencil, just place your stencil onto your paper and I find using a palette knife the easiest thing. Simply spread a thin layer over the areas you want. Don't press too hard, otherwise you'll squish it under your stencil. When you've done that, just pull the stencil off very carefully and you will have a lovely, and let me move that around so hopefully the light will catch it stencil in a millimeter thick but all that has come out really crisp and beautiful you need to clean your stencil off before you use it again otherwise it's likely to smear just wipe it off and then once this is dry i'll show you what we can do our modeling paste has dried unfortunately i've managed to damage this part of the number seven there um you would laugh because actually I couldn't find it. I was like, where have I put it? And I realised I was sitting on it. So that uh, is why it's damaged. Anyway.
very rare, I suggest you don't sit on your artwork. Something I should have said when we were applying the modelling paste through the stencil was say, I don't know, you only wanted the 91683 or something and you were concerned about the modelling paste going elsewhere, you can always use a bit of masking tape like, like this to mask off the bits that you don't want so that gives you more freedom. We can use a little bit of watercolour and just do a wash over the top. If it wasn't dry, you'll find that the, that the modelling paste will, will lift and start to dissolve in your wash if it's not fully dry. And can you see how the modelling paste is repelling the watercolour and we're getting the texture becoming far, far more obvious, which is really lovely. If you want to exaggerate this effect, you could lift some of the watercolour off the top of, in this case, the numbers, or of course you can apply watercolour into the valleys around those raised areas to make it stand out even more. This is one of my favourite ways at the moment of using stencils. I think it gives extra texture and intrigue to the work where it's applied and I just love it. As I mentioned when we, we started, certain modelling pastes are a little more absorbent and if you've got an absorbent modelling paste you won't necessarily get quite so much contrast because it will be absorbed. You'll still see texture of course, just won't be quite as stark. And if you were using acrylics, acrylic will stick to modelling paste and again you won't get quite the same effect that you're going to get with the watercolour. So there are our little samples. Just to remind you, we used a stencil in an ordinary way, just stippling with a brush. Here we applied a couple of different colours, the orange and the red through the stencil to get them to blend. We also tried using a little sponge there. We used more open stencils to get texture through the stencil. We saw that you can lift out so that you've got a negative stencil and I really like that effect. Then I have my little disaster with the mica powder that really didn't particularly work with that uh, glue stick and say in my head that was going to work far, far better. But we also applied gold leaf using gold size and it occurred to me that you'd get a far nicer effect with mica powder and gold size and indeed we did. And then my very favourite one of all was getting that raised beautiful texture by applying modelling paste through a stencil and then putting watercolour over to really emphasise that lovely texture that we achieved. So stencils are your new best friend for mixed media work, I reckon. You have a favourite method for using stencils that I haven't thought of. Please do share it in the comments because we're all here to learn from each other.